Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtide Media, and we are back with another Billboard tier list as we are looking at the top 10 songs from the dance electronic charts from the year of 2019. We've done 2022, 2021, 2020, and we are back now at 2019. We're going in reverse chronological order. And, uh, you know, this year um, is an interesting one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I'll say it's an interesting one. So let's uh, let's let's hop into it, put it all in tierless format, as that makes sense. Our first track, uh, the number 10 track of the year on the charts was Good Things Fall Apart by Lenium and John Bellion. Um, this is hands down Elenium's best song, period. No questions about it. Uh, John Bellion absolutely killed it on the vocals. The production from Millennium here is his most unique and well polished. Um, I yeah, I don't. Th I find it hard to find anyone that actually doesn't like this song in any capacity. Like my my wife really enjoys this song. My sister really enjoys this song. My parents actually like this song. The radio friendly people like the song. The kind of more EDM nicheer people like the song. I f I feel like it's hard not to find people that that just. The song is just loved. So we're going to put this one in easy S tier. Easy S tier. Way to go, John Bellion. You're one of your biggest songs, or Illenium, one of your biggest songs is also one of your best. Way to go. And number nine, again, actually, we had it uh, also in the number nine spot in 2020 was uh, Higher Love uh, by Kygo and Whitney Houston. Uh, somehow this track managed to stay in the exact same spot all year, or at least landed on the exact same spot. But uh, yeah, continuing with the kind of big name vocal features here, Kygo um, is kind of just known for having those a big vocalist and then their kind of classic tropical house sound design to it. But uh, yeah, this is one of the better Kygo tracks. And I would say that's primarily because of the Whitney Houston vocal performance. Um, and I kind of echoed that obviously in the last video, but uh, yeah, another tropical house bop, I would say uh, pretty good. Another one of Kygo's bests, I would say. Lenium's best, Kygo's best, we're getting there. Uh, we'll see if the rest of the year holds up. Maybe it doesn't, uh, but we're gonna put this one in the B tier, B tier, same as it was last time. Uh, yeah, because speaking of which, we're going to just drop uh, to the whole nother realm. Uh, we've got Call You Mine by the Chainsmokers and BB Rexa. Uh, here come the Chainsmokers and their dominance this year with uh, a lot of projects that came out in around this time in this year. This track in particular has a really weak synth lead and uh, BB's vocals just feel super overtuned. I never really liked her style of vocal performance and singing and tonality. It just felt, it feels like plastic to me. It feels fake. I don't, I don't know what it is about it. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of life in this track in the back end, but I uh, just, uh, just kind of your basic, not great chain smokers track for me personally. So we're gonna put this one in the E tier, E tier, E tier. Uh, and wow, shocker chain smokers again, uh, with five seconds of summer this time, this is, uh, do, uh, what, who do you love? And, um, you know, I, I have very similar things to say about this one. Uh, this is a try to more anthemic, I would say, commercial track here, but just falls into the same kind of tropes that chain smokers get caught into time and time again with a weak song structure and unengaging melody lines. And when they sing their own vocal performances, not a ton on this one, it just isn't great. And I just feel like they rely too much on the on features for tracks. And yeah, this one, not great. So we're gonna put this one in E tier. Again, E tier. And uh, oh my goodness, shocker, surprise, it's the Chainsmokers again, uh, featuring Kelsey Bo uh, Ballerini with the f this feeling. And uh, wow, guess what? This is same. Uh, this is more of the same of just that uninteresting Chainsmoker structure. Uh, this time they're, they have they do sing their own kind of stuff and have their own lead here, and it just does not sound great, um, especially when uh, Kelsey's there. Uh, Kelsey's vocals, I think, do carry this track to be a little bit better, and some of the other vocal features here. It feels like she's actually going for it in some capacity and, and, and trying and uh but just just comparatively to their their own vocals it's just no it's it's not great um at least the production also sounds like it's trying a little bit more on this one this one felt like just a little bit of a step up so we're gonna put it in a step up and we're gonna put it in uh, the d tier so that's that uh, and then we've got the middle uh by zed Marin morris and gray for a zed track it's kind of boring uh, it's kind of boring. Uh, Marin Morris's vocals are very prominent in the mix. And other than this being a very popular song from Zed that others would know, I actually don't think this is a really great track. Uh, I think I think it's really just known for being 
popular, which sounds like a dumb statement, but I don't think it's known for being like a good song. I think a lot of the EDM community is like, oh, this is the one that other people know. So I, I play this. This is one that, that I, that, pe- that I can play that people will enjoy and that people will listen to and, and not be upset with me because I'm, I'm finally not playing dubstep for the first time. Hopefully some of you can relate with that. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I feel like this is the one that you can kind of display. And then also for the commercial crowd, they're like, great, this is just a kind of basic track that they love and don't really care too much about what they feel about the song. And they just like it because it's it's popular. And so, I don't know, it doesn't have a whole lot going for it. It just feels like a weird, weird song to me. So it's uh, we're going to put this one in, in D tier, in D tier. Uh, then we got Here With Me at the number four spot of the charts by Marshmallow featuring Churches. Um, I'm a huge Churches fan and I had really high hopes for this one. Uh, but in particular, this vocal performance feels very phoned in uh, from Churches. And uh, yeah, with a very light kind of trap production from Marshmallow, it that sound in particular I think is some of his worst, where it's not really future bassy, it's not really dance pop, it's kind of that weird trying to be a little trappy, a little bit more on the EDM side. Uh, a little bit more on the like niche or EDM side and it just doesn't work for me. It just, yeah, I don't know. This 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 production, I think, from Marshmallow in terms of all the stuff is the weakest, but I do love Church's vocals, but they just feel phoned in. I think we're gonna put this one in D. This is a weird song for me. I'm not really sure how I feel about it a ton, but we're gonna put it in D, I think, for now. Uh, then we got Close to Me by Ellie Goulding and Diplo featuring Sway Lee. This was the number three track of the charts this year in 2019. Um, Ellie Goulding and Sway Lee's vocals, I think, are pretty solid on this one, despite the lyrics being a little ordinary, uh, but I guess it's sort of what you get with commercial tracks like this. Uh, overall, I, f- I feel like I'm a fan of this one in particular. The Diplo's production elements were fairly minimalistic in nature, and the whole track just kind of has a nice chill vibe to it, which I respect a lot as a commercial EDM track. So uh, we're going to put this one in B tier, in B tier. And then, uh, <laughs> man, I was laughing at the song when I was listening to it again. Uh, Taki Taki by DJ Snake uh, featuring Selena Gomez, Azuna, and Cardi B. Um, I just I just want to take a moment to look at one of the lyrics here. Um, it translates into English as uh, booty explodes like Nagasaki is a real verse that is sung in this song. The booty explodes like Nagasaki. Bro, that's just insensitive. That is just, uh, what? Like, I was shocked when I, I totally forgot about the song and because I, I didn't really like it a lot. And so when I was replaying it a couple of times, th- think about how I feel about this track. I was like, this is on this song? This verse is a real thing? So I was like, my goodness. But yeah, this is just like a feature fest of songs with DJ Snake's production on it. Uh, just, yeah, features on features with a fairly mid reggaeton beat here. Yeah, it, this this in particular, the song in particular doesn't really feel. Uh, I don't even know. It, it's poor quality. It's really insensitive, and it dare I say, it's kind of like a pandering track too. It doesn't feel like a celebration of Latino pop. Uh, I would say it just feels like a parody of it more than anything. So, yeah, that one's gonna go. It's gonna escape F though, because just barely. We're gonna put an E. We're gonna put an E. Uh, and the number one track of the year was one that was also on the 2020 charts, uh, was Happier by Marshmello and Bastille. Um, this is, uh, like I've said earlier, honestly, one of my kind of favorite, uh, not quite my number one, but one of the better, I would say, larger, more commercially successful Marshmello tracks, I would say. Uh, Bastille's vocals are a little dull comparatively to kind of some other vocal performances that you would see early on and later, but, uh, yeah, and again, the lyrics are a little more service level here, but I, this is one I can feel like I can, I can bop to, and I definitely really like the brief. Carolina remix of this track. I think it actually brought a lot of life into it that needed it. But um, yeah, I, I just have a lot of good memories with this track personally. So we're gonna put this one in C. But yeah, a weird, weird year. A uh, weird year that was pretty much dominated by the Chainsmokers uh, that had some of the best songs and some of the worst songs. And so it's just just an odd year for EDM this year. But um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below of any and all of these tracks. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.